the institutions that we've built up over the years to protect our individual privacy rights from the government don't apply to the private sector. The Fourth Amendment doesn't apply to corporations. The Freedom of Information Act doesn't apply to Silicon Valley. And you can't impeach Google if it breaks its Don't Be Evil campaign pledge. Al Franken. Does it appear every time you turn around someone is commenting on social media about you? Do you ever experience discomfort or frustration when you go to your email or your browser and you see targeted emails or ads from advertisers? Did you ever get one of those emails that begins, as someone who purchased this product we think you might be interested in? Sometimes that marketing technique works for me, especially when looking for movies to watch or books to read. Other times, I don't enjoy these companies analyzing so much of my reading, watching, or buying habits. I'm not a big fan of photos of me posted on social media without my permission. These sorts of mini invasions of my privacy make me think of more serious events, such as an employer rejecting me because of social media, pictures, comments, or ratings. Or an insurance provider or creditor dropping me or charging me more because of incorrect or false information posted on the internet. On the darker days, I wonder where does it all stop and how can I have privacy and control around my data? There are lots of good things in being able to share my personal information, but how can one manage control around privacy when the technology makes misuse of my information easy? What is privacy and its risks as it relates to technology? Two definitions of privacy are the quality or state of being apart from company or observation and freedom from unauthorized intrusion, one's right to privacy. In our pursuit of better understanding ethical issues around privacy and computing, let's consider key aspects of privacy and the threats to privacy. View privacy as a good thing and consider these categories as we examine privacy. Intentions, use of personal information by institutions, companies, government, and others. Unauthorized uses, theft, negligence, and our own actions. Technology offers good things, but as we learned earlier, technology changes at a rapid pace and our uses of technology and the laws and social practices around technology take time to catch up. We are always learning the positive and negative aspects of technological change and then changing our practices and laws. The nature and permanence of digital records presents big challenges to this unpredictable cycle of change and consequences. What trade-offs do we each make around privacy? Do we give up part of our privacy in the name of security and safety, health, entertainment, efficiency, or other things? We need to understand risks to make good decisions. Consider the risks around personal data. Most everything we do in cyberspace is recorded, saved, linked to us, and many times shared. It is often difficult to understand what we are agreeing to when we click that box on a website. Data is being saved at unprecedented rates. Technological advances have made it easy to save a perpetual digital copy of everything. Software and systems are complex. Sometimes the creators of software and systems don't even know or comprehend the things their products are collecting, let alone the software's vulnerabilities. Accidents happen, and sometimes even the best attempts at protecting privacy fail. Data is often used for purposes never designed for, and sometimes governments will demand sensitive or personal information from businesses and organizations. We cannot protect our information ourselves. We rely on businesses and organizations to manage and protect our personal information. One thing we might consider being positive are the privacy advocates who work on principles of protection of personal data. 
These advocates work for fair practices and suggest how businesses and organizations should treat and manage personal information. And our rules and laws change for good reasons, albeit sometimes too late. In her text, A Gift of Fire, Sarah Basse tells us, There are three key aspects of privacy. Freedom from intrusion, being left alone. Control of information about oneself. And freedom from surveillance, from being followed, tracked, watched, and eavesdropped upon. She continues to inform us, privacy threats come in several categories. Intentional, institutional uses of personal information in the government sector, primarily for law enforcement and tax collection, and in the private sector, essentially for marketing and decision-making. Unauthorized use or release by insiders, the people who maintain the information, theft of information, inadvertent leakage of information through negligence or carelessness, and our own actions, sometimes intentional trade-offs and sometimes when we are unaware of the risks. As we continue our journey, let's add privacy to the mix. When we consider privacy, let's weigh the three key aspects of privacy and the categories of privacy, including definitions, principles, trade-offs, consequences, choices, and actions. Mm -hmm. 